travel baseball coach Justin. Hey, welcome to the Travel Baseball Coach Justin podcast. I'm Travel Coach Justin, and today we have Becky Brackett from Southern Oregon Fast Pitch Blackout. Hey, welcome, Becky. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So I want to start off with how many teams and about how many players does Southern Oregon Fast Pitch have right now? We've got three teams in-house right now. Um, the way that we're kind of running things, we've got our spring teams, uh, which are going to be our local teams, um, doing our local tournaments only. Medford has about five tournaments right now um, with another probably three or four proposed to come in next year. So those kind of more fundamental teams will always do local tournaments. And then we also have our travel teams, which we have another two coming in here in the next two months. So we'll end up having probably five teams that travel um, from 10U all the way through 18U um, and they play year round. Wow, that's that's pretty good. Okay, so for me and the others who have been in the travel ball scene here in the Rogue Valley, Southern Oregon Fast Pitch Blackout just like popped up so fast. <laughs> we did. Can you give us like a a rundown from the genesis of Southern Oregon Fast Pitch to where you guys are now? Because that was super fast. Yeah, absolutely. So we were part of a different program here in the Valley. Um, we have seen some deficiencies within that program um without going into like the dirty details um we as the parents kind of disbanded um the kids were kind of left needing a place to go and a program to be picked up with and my husband and i had talked about creating our own program for a lot of years just because we saw some deficiencies within other programs between the lack of communication um the lack of uh, you know kind of migrating into the present with a lot of the drills, the fundamentals, a lot of coaches were kind of stuck in the past. Um, so we had planned on starting our own program in the fall. And then when everything kind of collapsed, um, end of February, beginning of March, we were like, okay, I guess this is happening tomorrow. <laughs> so we essentially um, jumped through hoops and moved mountains to make this program happen. Uh, we took the three teams on that were left uh, a 12 um, two 14s and uh, basically kind of made this program happen overnight. So we realized that none of our girls had insurance. They were playing uninsured. So we had to get them insurance um, within like three days, made that happen. Um, Cynthia Sanders, she's our USA local softball commissioner, has been amazing with that whole entire process. So fast forward to right now, um, we now have a 10,000 square foot facility um, that houses all of our teams. We've got 10 batting cages open to the public. Um, and also open to trainers. We've got a 6,000 square foot training pad um, and a big parent area upstairs uh, for viewing. So we have definitely, <laughs> I feel like moved mountains. <laughs> yeah, you, you guys really have, because by the time I heard about it and went to that first meeting, I think that was the first meeting at um, your guys' construction place, right? And then um, from there to where you are now, I was like, you got a facility. I mean, it, everything was like lined up and done and you, you did it faster than I thought was possible. Like every time I've heard a bunch of other programs in the Valley talk about getting a facility, getting a facility, and it's just not materialized. So yeah, um, without going in, into any details, um, you know, I mean, how did you guys come about just doing what you did? I mean, you had turf in there, you had, I mean, yeah, I mean, you must have had a lot of help. I mean, I, I'm thinking. Yeah, I basically have my sleeping bag packed up underneath my desk and we never leave. I never sleep. <laughs> my husband has worked really, really hard making this whole process happen. Um, we also own a construction company, Battle Creek uh, Development. So that was um, a big help in us trying to get the building because of just the networking and people that we know. So this building specifically, I mean, I think we looked at probably 10 different buildings before we settled on this one. Um, this one cost us a little bit more, but it had everything that we needed um, to present to our teams, the big floor. Um, there was another building that we were looking at that was quite a bit bi bigger. It was about 12,000 square feet, but it was pretty rough. And the build out itself was going to cost probably three times more than this one. So, um, and this one's a little bit more convenient. You know, we're pretty close to Central Point, pretty close to Medford. Um, so location was a big deal for us too. But yeah, it was you know, the turf, I mean, the first few co quotes we got was close to $30,000. So we really had to do a lot of research with coming up, 
finding the turf, finding the nets, um, and really not knowing what we were doing because we've never done this before. <laughs> well, you, it looks like you did. You do know what you're doing because the facility's absolutely amazing, especially Thank that you. night there a couple uh, a couple weeks ago or a week ago. Hey, um, yeah. but back to the teams. What does the rest of the year look like for these uh, three teams you got, the travel teams you got going on? Yeah, so our three teams, um, when they're in season, which we're still in season right now, we do two tournaments per month. We travel all the way up to Washington, um, Portland, Salem, down to Reading. We have a couple tournaments in Gardnerville, Nevada and Sparks, Nevada. Um, and, you know, we're not a vetted program yet, so we're not really going out and grabbing those PGFs quite yet. Next year, we're going to try to get our teams to the Colorado Sparkler, but we also want to make sure we have the teams that can compete. Um, so we're not, you know, spending money that the parents just are throwing out there for nothing. We're also, uh, for our 16 U's, getting these kids their profiles, um, getting them set up, getting them to be the point where they're able to be recognized by college recruiters is a really big deal. Otherwise, you know, you go for the experience with these big tournaments, but these kids are ghosts and they'll never be found by recruiters. So that's a big portion of what we're trying to do. We've got Jessica Morton in house, who's our um, academic advisor and college recruiter. So she's the one setting up all these kids with their college profiles, um, getting them ready, getting their paperwork set up. Um, we also have CSE coming in house to set up um, and do a bunch of metrics for the kids. Um, so that will be great because those metrics are then uploaded to a recruiter portal. Um, and those recruiters can kind of pull those metrics out for exactly what they're looking for to place those kids in appropriate colleges. So there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that we're working on doing with a lot of our older teams um, to give them the best case scenario to get to college. Right. And I noticed, uh, well, my daughter's in your program, so I know a little bit about what you guys are doing. Yeah. I feel like I'm in the dark because you, <laughs> like there's like you just listed two things. I didn't even know what that was going on. And so, but what I do know what's going on is that you guys, not only is it a training facility, but you're also Monday through Thursday are doing workouts, you know, for the girls in their off days. Yeah. So my daughter practices from Tuesday and Thursday, but then she could go in Monday and Wednesday and work out and train, um, not with softball but like strength and speed yes yeah so um who, who's running those uh strength and speed uh, camps so our strength and agility programs are actually being developed right now by Corey o'neill with pro spine and sport um we're working directly with him um and uh sierra winant who is his i don't know what her official name is she's kind of an assistant maybe she has an official title um anyway she is amazing her husband uh cory winant is one of the uh uh, coaches for the rogues. So they will be in-house doing a lot of trainings, but Sierra right now is running all of our strength and agility Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from six to seven. So those programs are going to be really specific for softball girls, um, directly, uh, just, you know, to eliminate all those future injuries that the girls are so prone to doing. Um, and some of those deficiencies that my husband and I saw before, you know, when these teams are warming up, it's the typical high knees, it's, you know, kickbacks and cherry pickers. And really the girls kind of halfway do all those movements and there's really no true warming up. So we want to incorporate, you know, some of the band movements, you know, open up the shoulders, really open up the hips. Um, and with the strength and agilities, um, you know, the plyometrics, the explosive movements, um, the stretching, the yoga, like that's all so important to these softball girls. And it's a lot of programs don't put an emphasis on that. And I think it's truly important to get them to that next level and eliminate injury. Well, I can vouch down here in the Rogue Valley. You're the only one doing it right now. So whether it's baseball or softball, so that's awesome. But with that, what are, who are the coaches that you're getting lined up or have lined up and how is your um, organizational structure all put together? Well, in the future, our hope is to take, um, you know, I've heard this uh, reference a few times, the daddy ball. So Ultimately, I would love to have, you know, more of those prior college coaches come in to teach the girls because they have the experience, they have the knowledge, they've been there, they've done that, they know what it takes to handle the stresses, they know what the recruiters are looking for. Um, dads are great, they're awesome assistants, I love having them, but it's a tough one, you know, we've all been in those situations where, you know, it, the perception is they are choosing their daughter over somebody else. Um, our coaches are really great. I don't think we have necessarily those issues, but as a whole, if parents are paying for a program, they really want to see their daughter excel past just having a dad as a coach. 
Um, we're not quite there yet. Our 16s are, but along with that, you know, you have to compensate those coaches and player fees go up because of that. So, you know, maybe in the future, in the next year or two, once we're a vetted program and people can see what we're all about and we've shown the caliber of our program that will eventually come. Right now, we've been blessed to have a great crew of coaches um, that really want to build this program up. So we have Robert Rivero, who's coaching our 12U, um, Kevin Nottingham's coaching our 14U, and then Kayla Bailey, um, who graduated from Simpson. She's um, got a degree in forensic psychology. So she's really big in the mental training world. Um, she coaches our 16U along with Ella Ivins. So 16U, you know, really, really big into the recruiting, um, mental development, mental uh, toughness. And then we also brought in uh, Greg Costanzo with Ethos Training. Um, he has a training facility in Phoenix. So he is running all of our kids through right now from 12U through 16U, all of the Ethos. And then our coaches are also uh, taking his courses. So that's a really big portion of what we're going to try to teach our kids. And, you know, part of our mission is training kids to become better people on and off the softball field. And when they're off the softball field, they've got all sorts of stresses. They've got, you know, the social media stresses, school stresses, you know, home life stresses. And it, we teach our kids sex ed and all these other things in school, but do we teach, <clears throat> excuse me, do we teach them how to become better people, better leaders, how to handle conflicts, how to handle, um, you know, certain things that they're exposed to in this life, we don't. Um, so that's a big portion of our program is just creating better kids and better leaders for the future. Yeah. Um, I don't want to leave ethos training right now, but I, uh, you had mentioned something about daddy ball and um, I was smiling the whole time because <laughs> those, those, those women back in to talk to the young ladies at uh, fast pitcher, they speak the same language that those ladies are going to understand where you know, dad can't say he played softball in college mm -hmm. it's just it's the, the the dad doesn't have the experience that these uh, college softball women do they and do, so yeah. that language is gonna be it's gonna be said differently it's gonna be received differently and i believe received in a more positive way to where they it becomes a belief that hey i can play beyond high school base or high school softball so um, but i want to get back to that ethos training mm -hmm. because um, that ethos training is not just for the, the, the kids, but for the, like you said, the coaches yeah. how to handle, uh, what the kids are going through right now, because I know for me, um, uh, you know, my dad raised me, uh, because we had, he had a similar upbringing than I, I did, but my son has a different upbringing than what I had. And what do I mean by that? He has these electronics. We had the Nintendo or whatever game, game consoles after that, but we didn't have the internet. We didn't have, but our kids are constantly bombarded and you can teach uh, the kids a work ethic, but the communication through the electronics, I am completely lost at. It's just like, just get off it. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, say now, you know, that's what me and my wife say, but uh, I was reading up on the ethos training um, for the coaches and I was just like, this is the skill set I need. Yeah, that I've been uh, that I know I don't have. And so uh, I was like really excited to read all about that in in that ethos training. Um, uh, I forget Costanza. Yep. Uh, I can't wait for uh, Keely to go through it because I know it's going to prepare her, uh, like you said, beyond softball in, uh, for college. And if she wants to go that route or beyond and anything else she does. So, yeah. Um, is there anything else with the ethos training that we didn't touch base with on that? Um, you know, Greg had told me that the ethos training is a West Point based program. It's the same program that they send their special forces through. Um, my husband was with the sheriff's department, um, for many, many, many years, I think almost 14 years. Um, every single one of the police officers went through ethos training. They send the fire department through ethos training, uh, teachers go through it. So it's the same program that they give, you know, 10 year olds that they give 40 year old men. Um, it's dumbed down and they have a juvenile version of it, but it's the same leadership concepts. Um, and they're extremely valuable. Every part of his program is valuable. And I think what makes them different is, uh, when Greg does these classes, he is, uh, he has a personal element, you know, he's sharing raw details of his own life. He's sharing raw details of other things that have happened. Um, so there's a lot to be gleaned from his programs and the way that he connects with the kids is incredible. And, 
you know, we had our first ethos last night at uh, practice and uh, I was sitting at my desk, you know, doing a couple things and just kind of half listening to them because I didn't want to eavesdrop. But it's interesting having these 12 year olds open up and when they went to go put in um, their characters, you know, what kind of characteristics are super important to you? And there's a whole page on, you know, trust, loyalty, um, all these things that the kids could pick from. And one of them said, this is really hard. And Greg said, well, why is it so hard? Well, we've never had to do this before. We've never learned this before. And that was really eye-opening. It's like, we haven't taught our kids this. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be very valuable and we are going to have little leaders. So I'm very, very excited for our kids to go through it. And uh, Greg's program is amazing. Right. No, I, I'm looking forward to it myself. That's that's awesome. Um, now, how can uh, young ladies join Southern Oregon Fast Pitch uh, Blackout? I know you got tryouts coming up soon. Um, just how can they join? Yeah, they can go to our webpage. It's www.sofastpitch.com. They can register for a new account. It's the top right button. Um, there's lots of uh, information on our website. And once they register for a new account, they can sign up for our camps, clinics. Um, we've got Blackout Academy with Bill Rao. Uh, we're doing that once a week. We've got the live at bats on Wednesdays with Bill. Um, so Bill's going to be a big part of all of our programs here in house. Also, um, he's also going to be doing personal training with, um, a lot of the softball girls, bringing in some of his baseball kids during the day. Um, so yeah, any of the programs that they want to do all the information's on the webpage. And then if they have any additional questions, um, my email is on there too. So they can personally reach out to me. And tryouts are August 27th, is that right? August 27th, yes. But, and you're going to do 10U through... 10U through 18U, 18 yeah. Right. Another great way to stay plugged in is our Facebook page, uh, Southern Oregon Fast Pitch. We usually put out all the flyers, all the information on there. So stay tuned because we're posting additional information all the time. Yeah, and you mentioned Bill Rao. So for those of you who don't know who Bill Rao is, uh, he's the Southern Oregon University hitting coach. They just won the NAIA national championship for the I think the third time in four or five years so um Bill knows and how how to teach hitting by by every standard there is I trust the guy as much as I trust myself and he Bill's a huge addition I think to Southern Oregon fast pitch it's absolutely amazing um Becky what you guys have put together here uh, from start to finish it's kind of like you got this you haven't left anything on no stone unturned here you just have like this funnel of let's let's get these kids in let's let's teach them the, the basics get them into you know 10 u 12 u and then all of a sudden you're hey we're doing training okay we're not swinging the bat we're not throwing a ball these are this is speed and agility <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's like hey now you now you need to be mentally tough you go through the ethos training you understand leadership and mental toughness you're led by these college some of these college, girls are college coaches like the 16 u i think coaches uh -huh. are. and then you have a uh, SOU, you know, the national hitting instructor for SOU in this whole thing, it's like, I mean, <laughs> you got a powerhouse of <laughs> everything. And this happened so quickly. I know. It's amazing. Yeah. I think, <laughs> oh my God, guarantee <laughs> that happened because I, when you, last week when we did that uh, open house, I was just floored at the amount of people that were there, uh, people that I've seen, haven't seen for a couple of years that were there. And it was just, it was, it was a lot of fun. So it was great. It's really been fun to see the community support come out and support this program. Um, and it's really going to take the full community to um, keep this program going. We're actively searching right now for support. We need some gym equipment. Um, we look like bad news bears in our little gym section. We've got some, some old dumbbells and, uh, one jump rope. So, <laughs> well, if it's anything else and you kind of focus in on that, you, you'll be able to get some gym equipment. I know Absolutely. I'll, I'll make sure I look out and ask them. Um, <laughs> and remember, we don't need the 50 to 90 pound dumbbells. We need, you know, anywhere from two and a half to 30. Right. You don't need the big stuff. So nope. I, mean, I know people at home that have the, the smaller weights that um, they could definitely donate. So yes, you can, absolutely. You know, reach out to me, reach out to Southern Run Fast Pitch and all that kind of stuff. Um, is there anything that you wanted to say that I haven't broached yet in the question? No, I think we've kind of covered everything. Um, we've got lots of additional programs coming. So if people kind of stay plugged into the Facebook, I think uh, that'll basically cover everything. I always ask somebody uh, a, a deep question, and this question is for you is, um, 
through this whole process from the genesis of the thought of putting your own program together till now, what is the, what's the first thing that comes to your mind that is absolutely the most remarkable thing that happened in this process? Oh man, the most and There's remarkable. many, there's many. So you're not picking, yeah. what's the first one that comes to your mind? Um, there are so many, I mean, that is a tough question. Um, I would say, I would say just uh, the amount of people coming together for the common goal. I mean, normally when you put something like this together, it's, it's not easy. I mean, it, not, none of this has been easy, mind you, but um, I think just the common goal, like there's so many people that want the same thing. There's Southern Oregon is busting at the seams for something like this and has been searching and yearning for this for such a long time, you know, a, a program that is going to be supportive, a program that's going to be encouraging for the kids, a program that's next level, um, that brings in those high caliber kids, because we've got so many kids traveling up to Portland and Salem to the bullets, to the vandals, you know, searching for that next caliber program. Um, and I truly like our heart's desire is to keep these kids here locally because those parents are hemorrhaging money and those programs are great up there. I have nothing bad to say about them. They're awesome. But in a perfect world, wouldn't we love to keep our Southern Oregon athletes here? So when we built this, you know, it was kind of a seamless transition, you know, those parents looking for something here for a program that they can build, that they can be a part of, um, the families that we have right now, they're the pioneers of Southern Oregon fast pitch. You know, they've kind of, they've held on and they've dealt with all the bumps, the bruises. Um, I personally learned by my mistakes. I've made lots of mistakes and I've, I've owned up. I've had to apologize several times. Like, I'm sorry about the schedules. I'm sorry about this. I'm sorry about that. It's been a rough, rocky road. Um, but the amount of people that have been supportive in this entire process has been shocking and amazing. And there's more and more people coming out of the woodwork that want to support this process. And I think that's what keeps us pushing forward. Yeah. I think you hit it on the head when you said this area is, needs something like this. Yeah. That's why, like you said, everybody just gravitates towards it right yeah. now. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it. I'm travel baseball coach, Justin and Becky from Southern Oregon fast pitch blackout. Thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you.